Hey everyone, this is Jessica with KA Greenhouse. I am doing a new presentation on all of the new shrubs that we're getting for the 2023 season. So come on and join me and find out what we have that'll be new and cool for this season. Alright, so the first new shrub to us um, here at KA Greenhouse is the Catoniaster Northern Borders. It's a variegated form of the Ketoniaster. Um, we've had the Cranberry Ketoniaster and the variety Tom Thumb as well. Um, some years we've had the Hedge Ketoniaster, which we will be getting in briefly this spring, if you're interested in something larger. The uh, Northern Borders is a smaller one. It, it almost mimics what the um, Cranberry, Cranberry Ketoniaster will grow like. It has, the, as you can see in the photo, kind of a mounding um, growth habit when it's younger as it gets older it has more of an arching branching habit so if you are looking for something that would um, drape over like a rock wall this is a very good option for you it'll drape over those those rocks um, and and kind of create a cascade effect um, the big seller with this one is the the variegated leaves the um, the foliage is green as you can see with the creamy white color along the edges um, it does flower. You probably won't see the flowers. Um, they're not showy. They're a pink bud that opens to a bell-shaped white flower. Uh, generally speaking, that's in mid to late spring. And then in mid to late summer, you'll see the, the bright red berries that start to show up on the plant, which do persist into the winter time. So it's very nice to have this, especially in Wisconsin, <laughs> where we have a very bare fall and um, very long winter so it's nice to have that as something to look at for winter interest um, sizing on this is only two to three feet tall but it can get up to five to eight feet wide so give it a lot of space if you don't feel like pruning it back it can handle some pruning but I wouldn't try to keep it to a two to three foot width like the, the height is um, the the branches will get pretty woody um, and, it, and it probably won't look that great um, hardiness zone on this is 5 to 8, so it's not quite as hardy as the Cranberry Ketoniaster, um, but still okay for us here in southern Wisconsin and also along the lakefront here in Lake Michigan in Wisconsin. Um, this one also is a nice drought tolerant plant, so once it does get established after those first three years that um, it's growing in your garden, um, probably won't need a lot of regular watering unless we see a lot of hot dry spells that we sometimes get here in July and August. So this new deer villa is called Honeybee. Um, not to be confused with the invasive honeysuckle, This, the common name of this one is bush honeysuckle. It's a very short, um, two to three foot, possibly four foot if it's really happy in its sight, um, mature size. It'll be same height as width. And you can see here it has a bright yellow foliage, which is, um, it basically emerges yellow and stays yellow the entire season. Um, the photo here is probably what it would look like in a full sun location, so anything more than six hours of sun a day. It can handle full shade to part shade as well, so it'll grow basically anywhere you put it. Um, tolerates dry soils, will also tolerate wet soils. So really, <laughs> it's a very versatile plant. Um, like I said, it'll grow pretty much anywhere where you put it. Uh, this one is coming to us from one of our suppliers here in Wisconsin. So I do wholly trust that it will, it will definitely grow here in um, the Madison area. The hardiness zone on it is three to seven. So even in Northern Wisconsin, it should do just fine. The flowers on this are, you can actually kind of see it in the, in the photo here. They're a yellow, so they, they blend into the yellow foliage that the plant has, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, the, the pollinators love this plant. We always have a lot of hummingbirds um, and a lot of butterflies and, uh, and the bumblebees uh, coming here to collect the pollen from the deer villas in the nursery yard, so this will be no exception. Um, I'm sure you'll get a lot of pollinators if you have this at your house as well. Um, this one is also a nice plant if you're looking for something to kind of fill in a hillside or stop erosion that's happening on a hillside. Um, it spreads by runners, um, so it'll definitely keep that soil in place if you need something on, on one of your hillsides. Um, also good for mass plantings, and 
I personally really like to pair anything with a yellow foliage with something that has a maroon or a blue foliage as well. Um, just to me, those three colors look really nice together. All right, so this is a new Father Gilla called Legend of the Small. Um, a few years ago, maybe even last year, we were supposed to get in a Father Gilla called Legend of the Fall, um, which we never actually did end up getting. Um, they got canceled on our supplier, so our supplier had nothing to sell us. So hopefully we'll be getting this one in. Um, it's the probably the shortest, most dwarf version of the Father Gilla that we will be selling this season. You can see in the far left corner, um, the photo is the flowers that come out in spring, generally speaking, right around mid to late May, depending on how, how cold our springs are. They're slightly fragrant. They're not going to be overpowering like a lilac flower is, but still, um, <laughs> I always get my, my new hires to stick their nose right in those flowers and, and make sure that they smell it because it, it does have a nice sweet fragrance to it. Um, and as you can see, they, the flowers do come out right around the same time that the leaves start to come out as well. So um, you'll see the flowers actually start to, to bloom just a little bit before you start to, to see the leaves come out. And the, uh, the middle or the right hand corner um, photo is the fall color. So it'll be green all summer long. The fall color is phenomenal. One of my favorite plants uh, for fall color. It's a, it's a really odd mix of yellow, orange, red, and almost purple. So it's it's a knockout in, in October, absolutely. Um, the one thing I will note, the deer and rabbits love to eat this plant. So if you do decide to plant it, make sure you fence it off. If you don't fence it off in summer, absolutely do it in, in the winter. Um, especially like February and March when things get a little sparse, they're basically desperate for anything edible, uh, they will absolutely mow this down to the ground. So make sure you fence this until it gets big enough um, to kind of handle a little bit of deer browsing or, or bunnies. Um, otherwise, it, to me, it's, it's just a gorgeous plant. It grows in the clay soils. Um, it is walnut tolerant, so I can grow it on my property. Um, if I didn't have so many deer on my property, I could grow it on my property. I have tried multiple times and the deer just, they always end up eating it down to nothing. Um, so this one generally prefers full sun to part sun. So if you have four or more hours of sun every day, that is probably the best. It will tolerate full shade. You just will not get the, the fall color. Um, it'll be more yellow than anything if you put it in a full shade spot. Um, and as I said, it's a dwarf, so it's it's going to be about two, maybe two and a half feet tall, and it's supposed to be two to three feet wide at maturity. So it is a very small plant, easily put in um, just about anywhere in your landscape. And like I said, absolutely phenomenal in the fall. So this is one that I tend to recommend to most customers. So it wouldn't be a new season without me buying in at least one different kind of hydrangea, right? So this year we have three new hydrangeas coming in. Um, this is the first one. It's in the Endless Summer family. It's called Popstar and it is being marketed as a dwarf version of Twist and Shout. So Twist and Shout can get three to four, sometimes five feet tall. Popstar is the, is the little one, um, one and a half to three feet tall at the most and same width. Uh, you can see here I have two different photos of it. Uh, that is because the flowers, like most of them in the Endless Summer um, family, they are dependent on the soil pH. So if you have clay soils like I do at my house, you will most likely end up with the pink flowers. If you have more of a sandier soil, um, you'll get the blue flowers. Um, as I tell the customers, you can try to alter your pH if you have clay soil and you really want the blue color. We do, um, every year we sell uh, a couple of products that can help alter the soil pH and give you that blue flower color if you really want that. Um, then another note with these, a lot of um, a lot of times you'll see that it says full sun to part sun. I don't generally recommend to plant these in full sun. Um, the macrophyllas, at least at my house, if I put them in full sun, they show a lot of signs of stress. So they seem to do better if you can give them four hours or less of sun every day instead of four hours or more. Um, it's just too hot, especially if you're planting, like in the top photo there, if you're planting them around trees, they get really dry really fast and then they get really stressed out. So um, 
I generally tell people full shade to part sun is the best location uh, for any of the hydrangea macrophyllas, at least in my um, experience here. So this is the second type of hydrangea that we're getting in this year. Um, Sykes Dwarf has actually been on the market for at least a few years. Um, I, I know I've seen them in landscape designs before. This is the first year I've been able to get them from my suppliers. Um, it's an oak leaf hydrangea. So you can see in, in the photos, the um, foliage actually does resemble very closely to an oak uh, tree leaf. Um, it's a, the Sykes Dwarf is a shorter plant. So it's, it's a dwarf oak leaf hydrangea, um, maxing out two to three feet tall and maybe three to four feet wide. And uh, the flowers in the photo there are when they're new. So they come out cone shaped, they're white, and then they kind of fade to some version of pink. So they'll start out as a brighter pink and then kind of fade to a dusty pink. And then once they're completely done flowering, they'll turn brown. Um, which you can choose to either leave on the on the shrub all winter long or you can just cut them off um, when when they've turned brown it won't hurt the plant either way the uh, big selling point with the oak leaf hydrangeas too are is the uh, fall color which you can see in in the second photo there um, it's almost like the father gilla where it's a kind of a mixture of orange red and almost a purple color so that's a really pretty addition to anyone's landscape in the fall um, the uh, oak leaf hydrangeas do tend to be a zone 5 plant, so it will need a little bit more protection. I don't generally recommend to have these planted out, you know, some people put a kidney bean um, garden out in the middle of their front lawn. I don't usually try to put these out there unless, you know, they're a pretty hard zone 5 middle of Madison or something like that. But for me personally, where my landscape is more of a zone 4, um, I, I have it planted actually tucked kind of behind my rock wall um, underneath my walnut tree so that's another thing it is walnut tolerant um, one thing that I again like the father gala the rabbits and the deer really really like to eat this plant so again until it gets large enough to be able to handle those um, trimmings <laughs> from the deer and rabbits in the winter I recommend that you go ahead um, fence it off just to give it a little bit of head start at least for the first three years that that it's uh, in your gardens um, the the best light requirement for this one is actually part Sun so like underneath like I said it's underneath my walnut tree it gets a lot of dappled Sun all day long um, east facing is great uh, west is okay if you water it enough the first couple of years um, south is probably not the best. You'll actually see the fall color start to come out on that really, really early, like in July, which is an indication that it, the plant is stressed. So you're going to want to go ahead um, and either move that to a better spot or um, even the north side of the house might be better just because in the summer it tends to get a little bit more sun even in the mornings on the north side of the house. But um, like I said, part sun, four to six hours of sun a day or like I said, underneath my any kind of tree. Uh, where it gets dappled sunlight all day long is, is a great spot for an oak leaf hydrangea. Alright, so this is our third new hydrangea variety that we're getting in this year. Um, it's called Tiny Quickfire, and I believe this is probably what they originally thought Little Quickfire was going to do. Um, because Quickfire, as we know, is a huge 5 to 8 foot tall uh, shrub. So that one's a pretty big, it takes up a lot of space. Um, then there's Little Quickfire, which I remember when it first came out, they were saying two to three feet tall, two to three feet wide. And then they came to realize pretty quickly that it's actually closer to a three, four, or five foot tall plant, um, tall and wide. So Tiny Quickfire, um, Proven Winners is saying, is going to be one and a half to two feet wide, and same with possibly three foot wide. Uh, but nothing larger than that. So this is supposed to be a true dwarf uh, paniculata, hydrangea paniculata shrub. Um, and as with most of the other quick fire types, it's going to be one of the earlier blooming types. Um, most of the quick fires start to bloom right around the end of June, um, at the very latest right around the 4th of July. So this one will start earlier than most. It'll start with the white flowers, cone-shaped flowers. It'll age to kind of a rosy pink, and then as it gets even older, uh, the flower will turn more of a dusty pink and then brown. Um, pretty much the same as you'll see with the oak leaf hydrangeas. 
So this one, um, being a dwarf, you can kind of tuck it anywhere if you don't want to put perennials in and you want something with a little bit more structure. Um, the tiny quick fire will also flower quite a bit. It's very floriferous um, as opposed to some of the older varieties and it's not supposed to flop um, like a lot of, you know, like Annabelle hydrangea, the old variety, that one flops as soon as we get any, any sort of rainstorm, flowers are on the ground. Uh, with the paniculatas, when they get older, the stems get thick enough that they, they hold the, the flower heads up versus having them flop on the ground. Um, this one, they say it's supposed to be deer resistant, but not rabbit resistant. Um, just to be on the safe side, I would probably, you know, fence it off if you can the first couple years, uh, just like with some of the other ones I've talked about, just to make sure that they don't mow them to the ground too much. And as a side note with that, the hydrangea paniculata should never be cut all the way down to the ground like some of the other hydrangeas um, can be. These, they do bloom on new wood, so that's not a problem. It's just this particular hydrangea, the way they grow, they don't generally sprout up from the root systems like some of the other ones do. So you'll need to leave the structure in shape. Just cut off the, the dried flower heads in spring if you left them up over the winter. Um, and that's all you really need to do in order to keep this plant happy. Um, for hydrangea paniculatas, they do prefer full sun. So this is one of them that you can put it in hot blazing sun, south side of your house, out in the middle of your yard, um, west side of the house, um, and it's perfectly happy. If you give it too much shade, it actually does get floppy. So the stems, they, they get kind of leggy, and then they don't actually fill in the way that they're supposed to. So full sun for this one, part sun is okay, but full shade, um, definitely not. And once they get established, this one's nice because it also is a drought tolerant plant. So first three years, you'll probably need to keep on that watering schedule, but once they get established, they're good to go. All right, this is uh, uh, definitely a new variety for us. It is not a new variety on the market. Um, at one point, we had one called Dream Cloud that had kind of orange and yellow foliage as well as just the green that you see here. Uh, but this one, the common name is Beauty Bush. Um, Colquitia is the Latin name. So Pink Cloud um, is named because of, as you can see, how floriferous it is with all of the pale pink flowers on it. Um, this particular variety will attract hummingbirds, butterflies, pollinators because it has that trumpet-shaped flower. Um, and it does have quite a few flowers on each of the of the branches, so when it is full blooming, it almost looks like a bridal Risperia. Um, the growing habit also is very much uh, like the bridal wreath, where it has kind of the arching branches. Uh, one note though, this is a slow to moderate grower, so don't expect it to fill in very quickly. However, once it does, um, the stems tend to get very woody. So it's actually recommended every three to five years to just cut it all the way down to the ground and let it re-sprout. Otherwise you'll have, um, you know, if you've seen those old lilacs where it's just growing at the top, but there's not a whole lot of growth at the bottom, that's what this shrub will do if you don't cut it back every, you know, every five years or so. Um, the zone on this one is four to eight. So it's definitely hardy here in most of Wisconsin. Um, it does get quite large, so you're going to have to give it a lot of space. It's six to eight feet tall, six to eight feet wide, um, which of course, the year after, if you do that hard prune, um, it probably won't grow six feet in one year. So it, you'll probably get, you know, two or three feet out of it once it gets established every, you know, five years, uh, cut it back, and then you'll get another two to three foot plant. Um, this one also does not have any significant insect or disease problems. So that is very nice because it seems like just about everything on the market now has something that'll go wrong with it. So this is pretty carefree other than um, the pruning, uh, but it's it's a definitely a unique plant as long as you have the space for it. All right, this one is something that people have been looking for for a couple of years now. So I'm very excited to be getting this one in in mid spring. Um, this is the bush clover. Sometimes it's sold as a shrub and sometimes it's sold as a perennial. Um, either way, it most likely will die back down to the ground every winter. Um, the root system is hardy for this area, but the top growth is not always that hardy if we have some of those really hard winters that we can sometimes get. Um, it's in the pea family, so it will actually fix the soil, um, meaning if you have really bad soils, it doesn't mind. It actually grows 
worse if you have great soil with great fertilizer. So if you put it in poor growing conditions, this plant will actually make the, the soil healthier. So this one is also nice, like the Ketoniester, if you have a rock wall, you can put this on top of that rock wall and it'll cascade over uh, the rocks that you have. Um, it has, as you can see, the, uh, the sweet pea-like flowers, they're magenta in color, and this is a late bloomer, so it'll bloom in late summer to early fall. So that's kind of nice to have. Uh, most shrubs are kind of done flowering at this point. It's, you know, your garden's starting to wind down and looking a little tired, so this is nice because you get that spot of color um, kind of when you need it, when you only have, you know, like black-eyed Susans and maybe coneflowers and uh, mums <laughs> at your house. Um, the mature height on this one kind of varies. It depends on how established it is and how fast it'll grow, but generally speaking, it'll be about three feet tall and three feet wide, maybe a little bit taller than that um, if you have a really great site. Um, full sun is best. It will tolerate part sun if that's what you have, but it definitely will not do a, a full shade situation. And this is another great one too, where it um, it does really well if you have a hillside, you're trying to work um, to, to keep erosion from happening. These guys will do a really great job of keeping the soil in place as well. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm getting three new varieties of nine bark in this year. Um, Lucky Devil is one of them. In the past, we've had lemon candy, uh, which is also very similar to this one with the yellow foliage. Um, when, the, when the leaves emerge in spring, they're that kind of bright yellow color, as you can see in that photo, um, in the larger photo. It'll remain a uh, yellow color all summer long, and then you get the kind of maroon orange fall color, depending on if you have it in full sun or part sun. I do not recommend um, full shade for this, though it probably can handle it. You'll end up with green leaves instead of yellow leaves. So the more sun you can give it, the, the better coloring you'll have with the foliage on this. Uh, this one is a dwarf um, nine bark. It'll be three feet tall, three feet wide at maturity. Um, and as you can see in the other photo here, it gets white flowers generally in June. And then shortly after the flowers are done blooming, you'll have those papery red seed heads on the branches, um, which do sometimes attract birds. Um, in the nursery yard, we'll, we'll find some of the birds uh, just feeding on the seed heads of the, of the nine barks. Um, like I said, fall color too is, is a really nice kind of orangey maroon color, just depending. The nine barks are sort of walnut tolerant, which seems like a non-answer, I know. I have a few of them around my property. They don't thrive, but they don't die. So I have one called Amber Jubilee, and it's perpetually four feet tall. And generally speaking, that one is supposed to be a lot taller. So if you have walnuts, you probably shouldn't be planting these underneath the walnuts anyway, because it's a, you know, that'll be too shady for, for a nine bark. Um, but just beware if, uh, if you do have walnuts around, it may not get to that full three foot by three foot um, spacing that it's supposed to get. Uh, the, other, um, the other nice thing about nine barks is they're all generally drought tolerant. So once you get them established um, after three years, honestly, I, <laughs> I have not watered my uh, summer wine nine bark in probably seven years. Um, I watered the first two years that it was in the ground just to get it established and make sure that it had a decent root system. But after that, I honestly haven't had to water it um, because they are so very drought tolerant. And uh, nine barks too tend to have a really nice um, bark on there. It's kind of, it's like a river birch almost where it starts to peel and it has different copper colors. Um, so it's nice to have that for a little bit different winter interests instead of just, you know, brown or, or gray twigs all winter long. Okay, so this is our second variety of nine barks, the new ones that we're getting in, called Spicy Devil. Um, this is replacing what I had been getting in, um, the Little Devil. It has, the Spicy Devil has the, the smaller purple foliage, like the Little Devil does. Um, you can see it has more of an upright growing habit from the photo here. It still has the same uh, pink buds, white flowers, and then the red papery seeds that all nine bark uh, tend to have. Um, the one improvement is I've been told that it's supposed to be more powdery mildew resistant, which has been a fairly large problem with the majority of the nine barks that we have in the nursery yard. So I'm hoping that that rings true and, uh, 
and it's not such an issue with this particular plant. Uh, mature height on this one is three to four feet and mature width is about the same, three to four feet. Um, nine barks can take some pruning, so if you want to keep it closer to three feet, I would just recommend to go ahead and prune it um, before the leaves come out in spring, just to you know give it a little bit of a haircut and keep it from getting too wild in your garden. Um, and like I said, for the other one, it, drought tolerance um, is phenomenal with nine barks once they get established, um, and somewhat walnut tolerant. So if you do have a walnut tree by where you wanted to plant one of these. Uh, it may not get up to the four feet. It would probably be closer to, I'd say, a two or three foot plant instead. And our final new nine bark is called Sweet Cherry Tea. So this one is coming to us from McKay Nursery here in Wisconsin. Um, and it is the very first re-blooming nine bark on the market. So I am curious to see how well this one does. Um, I believe it is the first time on the market now. So I don't know if anyone has any experience with it or not but uh, this one as you can see kind of re resembles the little devil as well um, with the smaller leaves uh, than some of the other nine barks it emerges orange the leaves emerge orange uh, will change to this purple maroon color in summer and um, and then will change to again an orange red in the fall um, full sun is best for for this guy in order to keep the purple foliage um, if you give it too much shade, it'll be an olive green color, uh, which is unfortunate, but it, it can't keep that, that pretty maroon color if you give it too much shade. Uh, it'll have the same pink buds and white flowers and then red papery um, seeds on it, but because it is re-blooming, you'll see it bloom in June, and then it's supposed to re-bloom again um, sometime in August, kind of like the spireas and the wagelias do. So you'll see this one re-blooming um, not quite as floriferous the second time around as the first time around, just to keep that in mind. So I'm curious to see what this one does. Um, may have to put it somewhere else in my property that doesn't have walnut trees, just to see how big it gets and, and what it does, um, does in the landscape. All right, so we have a new willow for the 2023 season. This one is called Golden Sunshine. Um, it's in that weird category where it's either a small tree or a large shrub kind of depends on what you want to call it so this one will get 15 to 18 feet tall but only five to six feet wide so it is more of a columnar growing habit for um for a willow tree um, can fit in an area where you need something tall and skinny um, it would actually make a really great hedge if if that's something that you're looking for something just a little bit different you don't want an arborvitae again because um, all your neighbors have an arb um, an arborvitae hedge so this is a great option of course because it's a it's a willow it's going to be very fast growing so if you don't want it to take over your landscape too fast you can keep it pruned um, to keep it a little bit I wouldn't say shorter but I would say not quite as wide um, the foliage is is very similar to like the arctic blue where it's really skinny so it it den does tend to um, you know, if it's a really windy day, you can even see from the photo here, it'll wave around in the wind. It's kind of like a, an ornamental grass almost. So it gives that movement in your landscape. Um, in order to keep the, the yellow coloring in the, in the foliage, you should definitely have this in full sun. I would not put this in full shade unless you are not married to the idea of having the yellow um, in your landscape. Because it will turn kind of a lime green or a pale green. Um, if you put it in too much shade. Um, I do have a new spirea coming this year called Double Play Doozy. Um, you can see here the flowers are a nice magenta kind of rosy pink color and because they don't make seed heads it's supposed to bloom all summer long. So I don't know what to expect if it's going to flower this much all summer long. I'm guessing this photo was taken when it first started to bloom, so probably sometime in late June is my guess. Um, but it's supposed to be an all summer flower. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'm very curious to see how it does compared to the neon flash that we have coming um, from Bailey Nurseries this year. Uh, the foliage, when it first comes out in spring, is a nice red color. It changes to what you see here as a nice emerald green. And then in the fall, you'll get the burgundy red fall color with that. Um, spireas generally 
prefer full sun. They will tolerate part sun. They will actually even tolerate full shade. They just will not flower as much and they'll be a little bit more leggy. Um, I have a spiraea on the north side of my house and in the summer it gets probably about two hours of sun every morning and it it is a fairly large plant now it just took a little while to get to be full size so um, speaking of size this particular plant um, it also is going to be um, about the same size as the neon flash where it's going to be about two to three feet tall um, possibly four feet um, tall and the same with they as with most spireas they tend to form that kind of mound um, in your landscape and uh, they do take pruning fairly well I generally recommend um, every three to five years with the spirea you can prune them uh, down to about six inches above the ground and that just helps to rejuvenate them otherwise they do tend to get a little bit woody and um, not not as attractive as they used to be and for our last new shrub for 2023 it is the plant that no one knows how to say <laughs> in college I learned it as Wygelia and then I was told that it's Wygela or Wygela but however you want to say it, <laughs> Midnight Wine Shine is the variety name. So uh, this one is actually a very small plant. It's, you, you can definitely tuck it in pretty much anywhere. Um, it's, it's only going to be one to one and a half feet tall and about one and a half to two feet wide. The, uh, the one kind of selling point besides the, the dwarf size of it is the foliage is that really dark, almost chocolate brown color. Uh, but it has a shinier leaf to it than a lot of the other Wygelias do, so it kind of almost seems to glow uh, when the sun's out on it. Um, same flowering as the rest of them. They have the trumpet-shaped flowers that come out in June, and then a lot of times you'll see them, see them sporadically flowering kind of in late July and early August again. Uh, the flowers do attract hummingbirds and a lot of the pollinators. A lot of times we'll see the bumblebees um, going after these these flowers um, when they're when they're blooming for us in the nursery yard as well um, a lot of times these can be eaten by deer in February and March when they're starting to get desperate so I would definitely say especially because it's a small plant um, you're gonna want to make sure to to fence off these these particular plants um, they're not really gonna get large enough in my personal opinion um, to be able to handle a lot of browsing from deer and rabbits so I would think that would be something that you would want to do if you have a lot of problems with the deer and rabbits is just fence it off every fall um, or even all season long just just to be on the safe side so with light requirements on this particular one because it has the the foliage that's not green um, the full sun is going to be the best for you. If you put it in even part shade, you'll get more of an olive green color. Um, and if you put it in full shade, it just, it won't leaf out that well for you. The flowers won't really be there. So don't even, um, I wouldn't even try to put it in a full shade area. And that concludes the new shrubs for 2023. If you have any questions about any of these particular plants, um, or actually any of the trees and shrubs that that we'll be selling this year, you can feel free to email me, knagreenhouse at gmail.com. Just put attention Jessica in the subject line um, and then I'll make sure to check that. Um, otherwise, you can always text me or call me on my work cell number, which is 920-415-4474. Um, and I generally have that at work. If I'm off, I'll have a message on there letting you know that I'm off uh, for the day, but I try to get back to people within 24 hours. So hope you enjoyed the presentation. I'm looking forward to finally seeing some green, <laughs> green growth out there. I have a few spring bulbs up, but not too many yet. So uh, that's something that I always look forward to on, on a nice sunny spring day.